It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and with us is Dr. Tim O'Malley from the University of Notre Dame, McGrath Institute for Church Life, here to talk about a conference that they're putting on about a book that came out 50 years ago. It's Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger's Introduction to Christianity. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. O'Malley. Oh, it's great to be here with you. Do you remember the first time that you read Introduction to Christianity? I did. Um, actually, I was teaching it, which is never a good idea. Um, <laughs> I should probably I take a look at this. It. Yeah, I should probably read it. And so I was teaching it to a class, and I just watched as the students, their eyes sort of opened up about what it meant to believe in the modern world. And they felt for the first time that they actually understood, you know, what was being offered by the creed. Hmm. Because the book itself is based around a commentary on the Apostles' Creed. Uh-huh. So if they keep realize, okay, this is what it means to believe, this is what it means to commit yourself to a, a person who is the Word made flesh, and that to believe was not just a kind of irrational affair, but it was part of the very sort of work of reason. We might think of Pope Benedict the Sixteenth as he was Cardinal Ratzinger before that, but this book actually came out in the sixties before he was even ordained bishop. So, can you talk a little bit about how Father Ratzinger became such a respected theologian? Yeah, so these were a series of lectures, introductory lectures delivered at his university uh-huh. um, in nineteen sixty eight. Of course, imagine that the world is exploding around you which it was, and so there was this sort of explosion of change going on, of critiques of Christianity, and here he delivers a set of lectures that are really really sort of intended for two audiences. The first audience is, of course, his common academics and other interlocutors, and so the book itself is engaging in critiques of Marxism, it's dealing with philosophy, it's dealing with scientific analysis, it's taking up every dimension of the academy, Um, and sort of attempting to understand what does it mean to believe in light of this. And at the same time, it's dressed to the modern believer, the the believer who sits in the world amongst the scientists, amongst the historians, who wonders what it means to believe. Is it still rational to believe? Is it still possible to believe? And so it's situated in these two audiences. In the book itself, I mean, uh, Rossinger never imagined that it was actually going to be a really important text. And it ended up going through two printings, three printings, four printings, very quickly, uh, and it became a kind of work that almost everyone admired, whether, you know, later on they would agree with Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger. Introduction to Christianity was, in essence, the kind of watershed moment for many of them in their own theological careers. What do you think inspired him originally to give these lectures? Yeah, I think what it inspired him to give the lectures is the same thing that inspired his papacy. You can see a consistency within his thought. If you read all of his work over the years— You can see a consistency. And I think what inspired him was this need for real and true dialogue with the world, that that Christianity gives up. If if it's to become merely a kind of private religion, a religion merely of the believers, those who take the leap of faith and jump into the abyss, but don't understand what they're doing and have no rationale for it, then you're in a situation where Christianity gives everything up. It gives up reason. It gives up wisdom. It gives up truth. And all that's left is a kind of will to power. Can I will myself to believe? And so Christianity must, in each generation, in essence, speak once again in introduction. And I think that's what he's doing for our own age. This is the introduction for our own age. This is the introduction that must be spoken here and now. And lest Christianity just become the province of those who believe without thought. (laughs) But so much has changed in the world, in the Catholic Church, in Christianity in the past 50 years. How does it hold up 50 years later? Yeah, I'm teaching it right now to undergraduates, and it holds up remarkably well. I mean, he's dealing with a couple of things that are indicative of the modern world. One, a supposed conflict between faith and science. And so here he's engaging in deep scientific analysis while also thinking through faith. He's talking about a distinction between calculating and reflective thought. Calculating thought is that which reduces the world to an object for use, for technology, for the creation of a world in which the human person reigns supreme. 
Whereas reflective thought is receptive, it receives meaning, it looks at the world first from the lens of contemplation before it starts to seize things. And he sees these as two sort of markers of the modern world, and what he does is, in essence, respond to this. And, and, and to me, these trends have only gotten worse, right? I mean, creativity, technology, innovation, these are the buzzwords of our day, mm-hmm. as much as they were for Ratzinger. And in the same way, how many of my students have been told that there is a conflict between science and religion? This is something that I think every young person struggles with today. And so as a book, it has a kind of classic status that few sort of books of this generation had. Besides the students in your class, how many students at Notre Dame do you think have read the book? Just kind of to judge its, its popularity among young students. Well, it's hard. It's a hard book. It's an introduction to Christianity that is actually rather difficult. And so, you know, in addition to my students, we offer some courses on the thought of Benedict the Sixteenth. Okay. So many of the students have read that there. Some other students have read it. So probably, you know, hundreds of students on campus have had some, an encounter with at least some dimension of the text. But this is one of the things is when Pope Benedict was made Pope, the work sort of received a renaissance. And so one of the reasons we're holding this conference is not just to hold up this work, which we think is excellent, but to start thinking, what is the responsibility to introduce Christianity today with the academy? How do we do it? What do we do? And so in essence, the conference isn't just on Benedict the Sixteenth's introduction to Christianity. It's about how do you introduce Christianity here and now? Yeah. We're talking with Dr. Tim O'Malley about the conference that's going to be held at Notre Dame on the book Introduction to Christianity. So you're breaking this this book down into all these different lectures and the application of it. Can you talk about some of the different themes and topics that you'll be talking about at the conference? Yeah, so we want to deal with the spirituality of the text, uh, the importance of Jesus Christ in it, why the work was written. And so we have scholars coming from Germany to actually assess what its effect was. Some younger scholars are coming in to talk about its effect or sort of certain dimensions of where Rothinger's thought moves from there. Uh, I'm giving a paper, for example. Uh, I can sort of speak about my own paper, best of all, because then I have to give it. Um, <laughs> on the liturgical dimension of his thought, on the way that everything from Rothinger proceeds from the gift of love at the heart of the world. And that even though Rothinger is not talking about the Eucharist in introduction to Christianity, not talking about prayer necessarily an introduction to Christianity, he's providing a way of understanding the world that sets the stage for it. And this is a world that we have to provide today. We can't sort of, we have to provide people with this world of gift of, of living into this, this world where, where there's receptivity rather than uh, seizing, rather than power and prestige. And so, you know, we're going to deal with this political thought that emerges from it. What does it mean to be saved? His eschatology. So, uh, every dimension of theology is going to be taken up, as he does in this text, because he really does deal with the creed, and, and to move from there uh, to think about, well, what does the text like this mean for those of us who have to teach theology today to 18 to 22-year-olds? So is this mostly geared towards those that are doing the teaching? It is, to a certain extent, but as I said, our, you know, I'm teaching it to my students, and they'll be coming to the conference. So okay. we'll have a lot of undergraduates come, and those who who maybe want an introduction to the introduction. Uh, like I said, it's not an easy work to pick up. And so this will provide you some of the themes, some of the hooks to hang things on. The papers tend to be rather short. So it's like 20 minutes, 25 minute papers for the most part. And so these are smaller sort of intros to the intro that will result in a bigger volume, which will help people to sort of understand introduction to Christianity today. So given that, would you suggest going to the conference, if, if for somebody like myself who hasn't read it, would you suggest going to the conference so you get the introduction to the introduction before reading it, or would you suggest reading it before going to the conference? I'd come to the conference first. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I think to open up a book like this, it's important to have a teacher. And, you know, outside of myself, we have some really excellent teachers who are going to be there who have studied this text and taught this text and really serve as great guides to learning a little bit about the intro. So usually these academic conferences, there would be fees and it might be even geared towards a specific audience, but this is free and open to the public. Why did you want this to be so open and available to people? Well, I mean, a conference like this is something where we want people to be able to come who are interested, who are engaged. If Rossinger dialogued in these lectures from the beginning with anyone who was interested, so we have to be too. Uh, and, And so... In some ways, this is a tweener conference. Certainly the titles, and it has a kind of academic feel to it, but 
um, like everything that the McGrath Institute for Church Life does, it's dedicated to the pastoral renewal of the church. And so we want to create a space where people from the church in the academy can walk together. And so we don't want it to be just a room full of stuffy academics who got $250 from their institution to come read a paper. <laughs> um, it really is more than that for us because it's a work that we all love and that we see in this work a, a possibility of a real dialogue with whatever age we're in, whether it's the modern world or the postmodern world. We want to facilitate this dialogue. We want to make this dialogue possible. So who do you think would most benefit from going to the conference? Yeah, I suspect lots of folks would benefit. Uh, you know, um, when I was a high school student and I began to be challenged, this is why, you know, when I started to, to read theology. And so if you're someone who's just reading theology, you're young, come. See yeah. how sophisticated it can be. If you're an older person who remembers reading Introduction to Christianity, you should come. Mm-hmm. Um, let it be sort of a, a trip down memory lane. You know, so in, in, in this sense, it, it really is a work that somehow spans generations. Uh, I really think pastoral workers in the area would benefit from coming because there is a catechetical dimension to the text. Certainly priests, what does it mean to preach as an introduction to Christianity today? Uh, and so anyone who's interested in these questions, I think, would benefit from attendance at the conference. All right. And we mentioned that it is free, but you do ask for a registration. So where can people find out? Oh, also, we should mention that it's going to be November 4th. It's, it starts on Sunday and then uh, it goes on from there. So can you give people a little bit more information about where and when and how to get signed up? Yeah, you can uh, register at mcgrath.nd.edu, which is our website, and it will be under conferences. Mm -hmm. You can register right there. Just fill out a form and you'll be registered. All right. And again, this is the Introduction to Christianity conference. It's going to be November 4th through 6th at Notre Dame. It's free. And like you mentioned, you don't have to have a theology degree to go to this. There might be some things that go over your head, I assume, but still you're going to learn so much about this book from now Pope Benedict the 16th. But any last encouragement for somebody who's on the fence or maybe saying, well, that's, Oh, here's another question for you. Actually, it, can you come to just part of it or do you need to go to the whole thing? Yeah, just stop in. You don't have to go to the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, my last word is I don't get everything in the book. I mean, this is one of the gifts of of the intellectual life is it's okay to struggle with really hard things. And I think that's something that's good for my students to learn. And when you're trying to consider the very essence of God, what it means to be God, that's hard stuff. So it's okay that it's hard. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tim O'Malley, for joining us today, sharing this conference with us. Appreciate it. Oh, it's great to be with you.